I'm a thinker, observer, the baddest man you ever heard of. All right, everyone, welcome back to the 2020 Vision Podcast. I'm excited for this episode as I have an amazing person here today to conversate with. How are you, Miss Destin? I'm doing great. How are you? Doing well. Thank you so much for hopping on the podcast. I know this has been a very enriching and refreshing experience for all. Uh, we've talked about so much in season one and season two, and this is just going to you know, keep evolving, keep talking about uh, different things that college students experience. So why don't you go ahead and introduce yourself, and then we'll get right into the topic. Okay. Hey, everyone. My name is Destin Williams. I'm a rising senior at Hampton University. Um, I'm from Richmond, Virginia, and I'm also majoring in Communicative Sciences and Disorders. And then I'm also the CEO of the Gemini Touch. Awesome. So this is crazy. Went to high school in the same city, both at Hampton University, both in the same major, you know, both Gemini's. And I think that's, you know, speaks a lot uh, to who we are as people because it's it's crazy that you know both of us kind of have like that home feeling when we're at Hampton and we you know we feel like we came from the same place we're going uh, the same path in different directions so let's jump into your business a little bit so folks for this episode we're going to be talking about uh, small business branding what it means to own a small business I know for many of the Hampton students who own small businesses and for those out there who go to other HBCUs and other colleges who own small businesses it's important to number one promote your business because that's how you know you gain revenue and attention and you have people support you and number two to talk about kind of your purpose and vision behind why your business is the way it is and I know I love me a good small business so um, talk about a little bit of how your business came to be Um, we know that it's you know it's very popular and it's very uh, successful so talk to us about where it came from where the idea came from and how you got started into that yeah so um the Gemini Touch is a hairstyling company that specializes in protective styles for black women. So I started about three years ago, like right when COVID started and I was at home a lot. I really didn't have a lot to do. And I've always been passionate about like doing hair, doing my own hair and like doing friends and family's hair. So I really wanted to find a way to like expand on that and really like tap into that passion especially with like covid and like not being in school and just having so much time so i um started my business basically like i kind of just like dove right into it and like opened myself up to like doing other people's hair and like trying new styles on people and in the beginning i'm not gonna lie it was like it was hard especially like gaining clientele and like learning how to really promote myself because promoting yourself is very important especially in a business like everyone is kind of doing hair you just have to find a way to like make yourself stand out and that's why I love the Gemini touch like um, not only just styling people but also making people feel more confident like being able to kind of change people so that like they'll walk in feeling one way and then they'll leave with a smile and like more confident. And I love being able to do that for people. Yeah. Yeah, that's that's awesome. And I I love what you said um, about helping people, you know, stay confident about themselves. I think hair, you know, hair, skin, um, how you take care of yourself, that's, that's a part of, you know, doing that is staying confident. And I know for us as a people in culture, you know, hair is very important. Um, And, you know, having someone that does your hair, that cares about your hair, that, you know, is going to help you take care of it. And also just make sure that, you know, you on and popping there and homecoming, all the different, you know, places that you want to pop out. I think that's very important. And I, I love what I love about your business is that it's so unique. It's not like, something that replicates something else it doesn't copy someone else's business mm-hmm. um and, you know on hampton's campus and for most of you that you know live on hbcu campus hair is important like if you you know if you got something to, to do something to go to freak nick cookouts like you got to get your hair done and i know you know for guys you got to get that cut for girls you gotta you know get your hair appointment in and it's so important to have 
Uh, number one, a great business to do that. And number two, a black owned business to do that also. And I think we have to talk about that as an important factor because the term supporting black businesses has became very popular in the terms of COVID. And that also was spotlighted in a lot of small business ventures that opened up. And I know when I go to big cities, you know, like Chicago and Philly and DC, there's a lot of small business ventures and a lot of black owned uh, businesses that I get inspired by just simply because they exist, you know, and what you said about growing clientele, that's very important. Like you have to you have to number one to do that support yourself and number two always like you said promote your business like you know if you don't do that i don't think because if you don't support it you know other people aren't going to like you know i love what you said about this with this podcast like i send it out to everybody i don't care you know if you don't like me i don't care if you don't like the podcast i don't care if you know don't even click it i send it to you because it's a chance for you to learn you know something new and i think for your business that allows other people to do that too is to learn something new about themselves about their hair um, about their personality because you know it's not just about the business you're doing it's about the clientele and how you're growing closer to them and such like that so i love your uh answer and then i will say to that before you move on i that was something that i had to get over like how you say you like send that you send your stuff out to people and you really try to get people to engage that's something i had to get over because i was kind of shy in the beginning when it came to promoting myself and like telling people like hey i do this style like i was just always kind of like oh if they find my instagram they find it but once I like when I made that transition from Richmond to Hampton, even though they're only an hour apart, it was really hard to like pick that clientele back up in a whole different city because I'm thinking like, oh, I'm only an hour away. It's not going to be that hard. But it was really hard and it was really slow at times. So I had to really get over like the kind of like embarrassing aspect of it that people don't really talk about where it's like, oh, what if I tell this person about my business and they don't want to support it? But you really can't think like that because those people, you don't want to support you anyways, because if they can't genuinely support you, then they're not going to help your business grow. So I like right. what you said. Yeah, I mean, and, you know, if they don't support you, then they're going to watch from the sidelines. That's how I look at it. And, you know, yeah. trust and believe they always watch it. Like people that don't want to support you genuinely because, you know, they might not like it or they might, it might just not be their taste. They're always watching because it's affecting someone in their life or it's impacting someone in their life and that might just inspire them alone. So they, if they don't have enough uh, courage to say it, you know, they're still thinking about it in their mind. So definitely agree with you on that. But what's your, um, what's your experience like with hair? You know, I know like I've seen you since the time I've known you popping out every single time. So obviously it's a very well-earned experience, but you know, as a child, like, did you, you know, were you into hair? Like, you know, did you always have like different type of styles that you liked? And then when you became, you know, this small business that turned into something bigger, how did you kind of like learn more about hair and, you know, get the expertise about what type of hair, you know, to, to put on people or even what type of hair that people have, their texture, you know, how to take care of it. How did you learn all that? Yeah. So, um, in the beginning, I was always like interested in hair at one point like I want to say like early in high school I kind of got to the age where like I was starting to pick up little jobs and my mom wasn't necessarily paying for my hair appointments anymore so it became a thing where it was like okay my mom's not gonna pay for it and I don't really want to pay for it so I gotta teach myself so I would say like high school like between 9th 11th grade was really just like trial and error like I would be on YouTube YouTube was the go at that time like I was looking up how to do box braids or how to do passion twists and how to do all these styles and then I would just practice on myself and kind of do it over and over until it started to look good and then I eventually got to that point where I was like you know what I can do this on other people like and even when I first started doing it on other people, I still had my like trial and error moments, especially like you said, when it came to working with different textures, because I was only, I was mostly like used to my type of texture, but then there are other people with like looser textures that need you to be more gentle with their hair or people with a lot thicker texture that need like a certain product or a certain product may not work for them. So it was really just like, trial and error also communication in the beginning like really explaining to people like I'm newer to this and like you know setting that disclaimer in the beginning of course I got to a point where like I didn't have to do that anymore 
but I never wanted to like, you know, not let someone be aware that like I'm a new stylist. So that's something I would recommend for like people who are newer to really like set that disclaimer because you don't want people to be like disappointed in wanting a certain outcome that they see on your page, but like, you know, you're not used to their hair texture, so it might not be like that. But I would say just like, I learned a lot from experience. Like at the point I am now, I feel like I've worked with so many different like textures and densities and lengths, like people with like breakage areas or like areas that are more sensitive that you gotta kind of like work around. And then it's also like, you have to be kind of like empathetic at the same time. Like, you know, not to make anyone feel embarrassed about like, oh, maybe their edges are thinning. Like, don't point that out. Like, cause our hair is like a big part of us. And we, like you said, we take pride in it and it's a representation of us. So you want to make sure, like you want to know that your hair is in like safe hands and it's being cared for and it's not being like judged. So I make sure that I do that too in my work. Yeah, no, I, I love that you said that. And for everyone out there, you know, when you are thinking of, you know, practices in a way, you have to look at the mindset of honesty, simplicity, and comfortability. You have to be honest, one, about just everything you do with your clientele. Number two, you have to make sure your clientele is comfortable. So making sure that they are, you know, they know exactly what you're doing, why you're doing it. And if you have like a suggestion, you, you know, give them all the options so they can maybe compromise with you or you can say like, hey, I think this is better. And then y'all can come to an agreement. Um, and then simplicity is just making sure that they know that they can, you know, get outside their comfort zone and try new things. I do it exactly with, you know, this podcast and everything that I do. Everyone that, that joins or is a part of everything that I'm doing, I make sure that they are comfortable with, you know, the process and comfortable um, with everything that I try to get them to be a part of because you want people to support you, but you also want uh, want them to be comfortable in supporting you. You know, you don't want people thinking that you're not open to new things and that you're not willing to compromise. Then, you know, they don't feel like they're because yeah, it's like a, being a part of a family. Like you want your business, you want what you're doing to be a family and for your clientele to have high respect for you because they're the ones that ultimately are going to grow your business and send it to other people and help you really venture out. So before we move on to um, the next top or the next part of this topic, um, mm-hmm. tell me just in a, a few uh, short like sentences, what what motivates you to keep going? Because I know, you know, people have small businesses throughout college. They have small business at a young age. Um, and some even keep it all the way to their adult career. So, uh, number one, do you feel like you're going to keep doing this uh, for the remainder of your 20s? And number two, what's going to keep motivating you um, to stay in this business? And are you going to try to, like, branch out and maybe collab with something else or another type of business or grow it, you know, to higher levels? Tell me a little bit about that. Yeah. Oh, that's a good question. Um, I do enjoy doing hair and I can't see myself doing hair for a while. Um, in the long term, I would like to get from behind the chair and do more work for my business, like out in the community or like, you know, teach classes and like teach other entrepreneurs how to like, kind of like follow in that like those entrepreneurial footsteps like really just kind of becoming like on the mentor the mentor aspect of it instead of like just staying behind the chair because while I do love doing hair and like love seeing the outcome I really want to do more and I feel like I could do so much more with my business and just like expanding it to the community and like helping other little girls with like building their confidence in their hair, teaching them about their hair, like how to care for their own hair and not just depend on going to the salon like every other week. Like, um, yeah, I hope that answers your question. Yeah, I, I love, and I love that you have a, a bigger purpose about it. I think when most people have small businesses and do what they do, uh, I think sometimes they get caught up in like why they're doing it because it's always gonna change. Like if you're doing something for a specific reason, that reason might change over the course of how many years you're doing it. Like um, one of my favorite basketball players today, which many of you will actually be surprised by, is actually Angel Reese uh, from LSU. And one of the things that she talks about is inspiring, you know, the next generation and inspiring people 
people feel like, you know, they don't have a voice and feeling like they don't have a, a space to be comfortable. And that is why we do the reason, you know, that's the reason why we do what we do, because we want people to look at us and get inspired and maybe start their own venture. And I think that's what it's all about. So I love when I want to piggyback off that when you're done. Yeah, and I love when you when you said that you know you want to keep this going for a while because you have to inspire people to to do more to get out of their comfort zone. At the end of the day, like one little impact or connection with you or with what you're doing with your business that could ultimately set the next generation a part of the next generation, you know, for life and what they want to do. And it doesn't have to be hair. It doesn't have to be a podcast. It doesn't have to be you know a clothing brand. It just might give them inspiration to actually start something and do something of their own. Yeah. I just wanted to piggyback off that real quick as far as like inspiration because I think it's very important especially being like young business owners like people really doubt you in the beginning like I started doing hair when I was 18 and the biggest thing that I would hear was like oh like you're a little young to be doing hair like it was just like I wasn't really being taken seriously in that like world of professionalism because they assume like because of my age I wasn't like I didn't have the sense enough to like own a business and like be like practical about it so that's why I really want to like inspire other young girls like me who like you know want to be in the service industry or just want to like own something or sell something like it's definitely possible and age shouldn't be a factor you know it's all about mindset and drive yeah, cause I mean you can't you can't be too young to do anything. I mean, they, I just saw in the uh, the shade room the other day. There's this 14 year old girl who just got her third master's degree. So I'm just like, I <laughs> I'm not even on her level yet. I mean, I'm like, dang, third master. I ain't even got my undergrad degree. But I think it's important that we know as an age factor that you don't have to be a certain age to do something. If you have the tools, if you have the resources, if you have the vision, the, the goals and the dream, just do it. You know, and I, I really champion that to everyone is that the only I say this all the time, the only thing stopping you is you. Like that's really um the biggest thing because your perception of how you think how you think other people think about you that's the only thing stopping you if you just block out all that noise and you know all the distractions and just focus on what you want to do and at the end of the day just do it that's really the only thing stopping you is doing it um i think some people get too afraid and have a lack of confidence in doing it that they don't even know you know the possibilities or the opportunities that can be explored so get out comfort zones try something new and that could be ultimately what sets you up for life so that's uh, absolutely awesome and then let's jump into career field uh, for a minute so for most of you that that know both of us you know that we are in the world of communicative sciences and disorders going into the field of speech pathology slash audiology and it's so funny Destin because when most people when they ask me what my major is most people are like what is that again speech pathology yeah, every I'm time like, actually <laughs> I'm every like no, it is not speech pathology. It is speech pathology. I, I, at this point, I started saying speech therapy. I was just like, you know what? Just call it speech therapy because it, it just, it's hard to explain. But pe like most of the people that ask what it is, they probably had it when they were younger. That's really like the mindset that I go off of. I'm like, you probably had a speech therapist or had somebody in your family that had it. And then how that transitioned you when you got to Hampton into choosing this major. What inspired me to study um, speech pathology and audiology is actually my um, my youngest brother. He's autistic, and um, growing up and kind of like seeing his like dynamic change once he like started receiving speech therapy and like seeing that growth and like his communication really was like the like yeah this is what I want to do because I never no one really talks about the field of speech pathology that much so I really didn't know anything about it until I really started researching and I knew I always wanted to help people help children so I was like this is perfect and I love to talk but obviously it's not just about like speaking but back then I was like yeah I love to talk I love kids let's do it but um as far as high school high school um I went to Enrico High School I was in the IB program so I think like while my like major now didn't really connect to my um, high school experience, my like classes, my um, IB classes really like kind of prepped me and like kind of got me ready to like think critically when it came to like schoolwork and it um, helped me in that way. But when I got to school, like 
and like seeing the dynamic of the major I would say is definitely not what I expected um we're kind of getting more into like the hands-on stuff now but in the beginning I was just kind of like oh when are we gonna get to like you know working with kids or like doing what I you know what I want to do but I would say like all that really like prepped me I learned a lot about like all that goes into communication not just like being able to say a word a certain way but just being able to like understand why a child may not be able to communicate effectively and like how to kind of like help them get to that point so honestly i love my major hello what do you think wesley so no i definitely agree um i have definitely had my back and forth balance uh with speech pathology and this this field as a whole um i think that most of us that go into it have had experience with it um, throughout our lives because i know when i first came to the country um, i didn't speak english at first and i had a, a speech pathologist try to help me um, figure out how to speak english really well and i also have had many people throughout my time middle school high school um, that has speech disorders and stutters and lisps so i've been in this my whole life i just didn't i didn't think that I would turn it into a career and I let me just tell for everybody that's listening it ain't easy I'm gonna just go ahead and say that now this major and field is not easy very rewarding at the end of the day but it's not easy because you're doing something that most of the time yes you have the knowledge for it yes you have the information for it and yes you have the the degree to back you up but most of the time it's literally self-awareness of how like how you're basically producing uh, success in this field because you have to study people, you have to study what their disorder is, and you have to study how to respond to it. That's a, a lot of communication, like you said, is how this major plays out. And I think a lot of what, especially we went through, uh, through Hampton and that experience of being in that major, it definitely is a lot. You have to kind of keep your passion for it because it, the passion can be lost at certain points and I definitely know I've lost passion a lot of times um, and I definitely regained it this summer being you know working at a senior home and being in that area um, seeing how it's really affected uh, people's lives I had a, a family member that had a stroke recently and um, knowing that stuff like that is what speech pathology um, people and speech therapists how they help people recover from that I think that's what inspired me to keep going because I know in the future when someone in my life or someone close to me has to you know god forbid deal with an unfortunate situation like that I can come in as my career and as something that I put a lot of time and energy to and potentially save their life so I definitely um love that we're able to do it for a bigger purpose and do it so that we can potentially save people's lives one day. So that's awesome. Um, and, you know, our, our Hampton experience has been definitely um, obviously one for the books because COVID, you know, definitely took a took a turn and then coming back and trying to, like you said, uh, waiting to get to clinicals. And so clinicals is a big part of what we do um, in our major. So going from postgraduate to your um and I'm, I'm assuming you want to go to graduate school correct yeah okay so graduates looking at graduate school and postgraduate what are your plans um for graduate school like do you have your maybe top three in mind and then what do you want to do after graduate school like where do you want to start in the in the career field um so as far as graduate school i'm still kind of working on my list my list of my like tops but um like this past summer i had the opportunity to work to do an internship at ut dallas in richardson texas and um see their like speech program and like talk to their grad students about their experiences and like observe them working with other children and I really, it really kind of got me excited for like the clinical field um, of working in speech. But at the same time, my research, I mean, my um, internship was more research focused. So we did, um, we each had a research project to do. So I'm kind of on like both sides of it where like I'm interested in the research side and like kind of developing more on that, especially because my research was focused around autism, which is something that I'm very interested in. But then also like the clinical side of actually like working with the kids, that's something I've always wanted to do. So I'm kind of like on the fence of the two of those, but I would say right now post 
grad school, I definitely want to start in the school system, like be like a school speech therapist. There's so many things that you could do with um, speech therapy, but ultimately I want to have my own private practice like later down the road, but I definitely want to start in the schools right now. So, yeah. Yeah, that's awesome. I, I think you're definitely right. Um, there's a lot of different ways you can go with this degree and also this field because it's always needed. Um, and, you know, it's and I know most people talk about the lack of black men um, in the field, but it's, you know, I think both are needed. Definitely need black men and women in the field um, just because, number one, you know, it, it does tie to the whole doctor perspective uh, because you basically are a doctor and you're helping people, saving their life, helping them get back um, to a certain point that they were at. And it also plays into, you know, a bigger part because you're not only helping a person, but you're helping the life that they have around them. Because there's a lot of people where speech disorders and different types of, um, you know, misfortunes of speech, like some of that can be hereditary and some of it can be just developed over time. So it's important that we can help those people um, and build connections off of that to know, because it's not just like, oh, for example, like I met you know, this older woman who may have had a stroke and, you know, needs speech therapy, but maybe someone else in her family, you know, needs speech therapy for something that they had a long time ago and never got an opportunity um, to to be able to get support for it. So that's definitely important. And then lastly, let's jump um, into the HBC experience. So for many of you on the, on the last episode, we talked about um, attending an HBCU. Uh, the last guest, Trevor, gave some great insight on what it means to attend an HBCU. And I know, Destiny, you've had a quite a ravishing experience with being at Hampton, um, you know, supporting many businesses, being out in the open, uh, definitely been out more than me because, you know, I'm, I'm, I normally be inside. But <laughs> you've seen a lot of how the HBCU experience has played into small business ventures and how um, people support each other. So how has um, your like Hampton experience overall been with your small business with being in this um, very difficult but rewarding career field and also, you know, being from Richmond, which is not a small city, but, you know, people coming from Texas and Philly and Chicago and L.A., like we're, you know, we come from Richmond, so we're local. So how's that experience been for you overall? Um, well, firstly, on the like business side of like being at HBCU, I think it's great. Honestly, when I first got to Hampton, I was kind of scared because I was like, oh, well, I'm sure like it's a lot of people who can do hair. It's a lot of people who can do what I do. And you really can't think like that because, yes, it's like a lot of people that do hair. It's a lot of people who's great at what they do. A lot of people who sell hats or sell jewelry or sell clothes. But you really just got to figure out a way to stand out and promote your uniqueness. So I really had to learn that. Um, I had to learn that quick at Hampton. But I also love the like support and how like Hampton has like things like the beauty badge, which they have during oh, yeah. Black History Month. Yeah, and they like highlight like female entrepreneurs or like entrepreneurs in like the beauty industry and I love that they do things like that really like putting forth like the black businesses because I've met a lot of business owners who are great and a lot of people who support me who like I may not even like know personally personally but they'll see my stuff and they'll give me my flowers like oh my gosh I love your work or like you know I can't wait to come to you and all of that just means so much to me um uh, as far as my career i would say it's great because like like you mentioned before it's not a lot of black men or women in the field if we look at statistics it's only 3.6 percent black people in the field of speech and audiology so like actually seeing um like our professors who are like black speech therapists and audiologists and like getting their like mentorship at the same time of like navigating like grad schools that are like mostly white and like kind of I like how they kind of like set us up for like kind of to expect that because I saw that a lot in my internship this summer like a lot of white clinicians um I really don't remember seeing any black clinicians working um at UTD this summer but I just 
it, it also kind of like opened my eyes to like, you know, once I leave Hampton, that's what I'm going to experience. So I really need to like, you know, not let that deter me in like the schools that I choose or like the career paths that I go because you kind of get that everywhere. It's just right now we're like building the, we're trying to bring this percentage up of 3.6 and, you know, contribute to the major and the field in a positive way. So I love that. Um, the last part of your question, oh, coming from Richmond. Um, being local at Hampton is definitely very interesting. I don't know if you experience it, but like when I tell people I'm from Virginia, they're like, oh, Virginia, you're from here? <laughs> and I'm like, yeah. And then they're like, well, why did you come here when you could have gotten out of Virginia? And like, I understand that, but my, I guess my personal reason was just because I wanted to go to an HBCU with my major and Hampton is kind of one of the only HBCUs with the major at least like in a reasonable like distance so honestly I would say Hampton is very different because it's people coming from all over and I wasn't used to that before coming to Hampton like I was just used to people from Richmond and like people kind of act one way so seeing people come from like all over the country and people were so different it just I was like wow but um it's also very interesting too like when it comes to like networking and getting other people's like perspectives on things like very interesting yeah i mean it's like ain't, ain't no wrong with being local i love it i mean i get supported by the richmond uh hampton alumni groups where some of my favorite people have set me up with opportunities uh, to mentor young black men and also, I mean, ain't nothing wrong with that st in-state tuition either. I mean, I I'll take it. Plus that Virginia that hour, the hour commute. Yeah. Plus that Virginia tag grant, I'll take it. Cause I ain't nobody mad at it. And I know, you know, people coming from huge name states and cities, you know, they see Hampton and, and Virginia. And, well, I guess I'll call it the port because you have Newport News, Virginia Beach and Norfolk. And they're like, oh, ain't nothing to do out here. I mean, we make it work. We really make it work. And I know, you know, most people get bored at Hampton, but you really can have an amazing experience there if you focus on what you're doing, focus on your craft, focus on, you know, what you are trying to do with your career field. Network, like you said, with so many different types. It's so easy to network nowadays. I mean, you can literally go on LinkedIn and literally hit up anybody that you want to in terms of what you want to do. And then once you grow yourself, you'll have people hitting you up trying to you know support you in what you're doing so that's that's definitely uh key important and so you know three takeaways from this episode i want everyone to kind of to focus on before we finish here number one is if you have an idea for a small business if you have an idea for something that you want to do or just some idea that you want to just create and let it out just do it because at the end of the day you know no idea is a bad idea unless you causing harm or trying to um, set something else back you you have an idea go for it because at the end of the day you, you're not going to know how far it's going to go and i think the biggest things if you have self-confidence in yourself to know that you can take it far then other people are willing to support you and know that you're doing it for a good cause and that's one of the other big things is know why you're doing it and have a bigger purpose for it number two is make sure that you are able to connect and grow with your clientele no matter what you do this is away from businesses and focusing on your career focusing on what you want to do in life make sure that the people supporting you know why they're supporting you and know you know how they're supporting you because they don't want to just support like a blind vision tell them exactly what you're doing tell them exactly what you want tell them exactly what you want your career field to be and number three is don't settle for less. I think that's one of the big things that, you know, we can say just as young college students. Um, and I've known you for a while, Destin, and we both have, you know, come from really good backgrounds. And I think us getting out of our comfort zone, trying new things, not settling for less, I think that's important. But I feel like if you settle, then you're not allowing yourself to grow in those different areas. I feel like if you're just like set on one part of your life, and you're like, oh, this is fine. That's that's the best that it's gonna get. Like there's, everything has a chance to elevate. That's what I always tell people. Like nothing is gonna be just one method of perfection. Cause there, there's no perfection. You always constantly have to figure out ways that you can elevate um, support people's businesses support what they do because they might ultimately help you out with you know your 
your idea and help it grow. So make sure that you're supporting each other. And the last thing I'll say um, before I leave it to you for anything else that you want to uh, say before we get off is that invest in yourself and invest in your vision and what you want to do. Um, because at the end of the day, that might be, like we said earlier, an inspiration to someone else that might give them a motive to say, like, I want to start this. I want to do this because I saw someone else do it. I've had people reach out to me simply to get their own thing going. And and don't be I say don't be mad. At, and I don't want to call it competition because I feel like everyone's on their own race. But don't be mad at the um, the spread out of what everyone's doing. If, if you have, you know, a business, if you have a podcast, if you have a clothing brand and someone else has one, don't be mad because they have one. Just have the best one that you can have and then support them so that you all can take it to higher levels because that's honestly like the best way that we're going. So I'll leave uh, the floor up to you. If you have like any last advice that you want to give to anyone that, you know, wants to have their own business or, you know, if you want to give any promotion words to have people support one of the best hair businesses probably the best hair business in my opinion on Hampton's campus and potentially the world but yeah uh, I just say like everything that Wesley said and also like never stop promoting yourself even if you feel like you're showing up on someone's timeline like four times a day never stop because honestly the more you're posting the more you're getting on people's radar and the more that People are going to be sharing you and seeing you pop up. And the more they see you pop up, they're going to be like, hmm, I, you know, I should check this business out. Like, I should see what they're doing. And um, also at the same time, like you said, like, don't let someone else's success, like, discourage you. And if you, like, feel like you're not getting booked as much or, you know, you're not getting as many sales, let that be, like, motivation to work harder or, like, switch it up. Because if you see that something's not working, if you see that just posting on Instagram isn't working, maybe you need to go to TikTok, maybe you need to go to Facebook, maybe you need to set up flyers around the school, maybe you need to hand out business cards, put business cards in beauty supplies. Like if you're a hairstylist or in the service industry, like beauty supplies, they'll let you leave your business cards and people go through the store all, all, the, day, all the time. So they can pick up a card and, you know, there's a client so really just like use that stuff as like motivation to work harder and not to like give up and say like oh I'm not getting enough support I'm gonna just you know kill the idea like definitely hold on to it keep working um definitely network uh, what I do like if I like meet someone who I think could be like helpful in my career or like my business like I'll take their name I'll take their email their phone number and I'll say look like can I reach out to you if I ever have any questions about this? And nine times out of 10, people love to help other people. So they're gonna be like, of course you can. And then just hold on to like a note of like all these people you've interacted with and like, so that you can remember like, if I ever need help with this, like I'm gonna hit this person up. It's very important. And um, yeah, that's pretty much it. Never be your biggest, biggest supporter biggest fan don't depend on anyone to promote your stuff for you 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 are the first you know person that be, should be supporting yourself so yeah support is surround sound i can't i can't emphasize it enough you you're not going to get the support you need until people know that you are 100 percent committed to yourself and you support yourself because if they see any like point of you know, and obviously there's self-doubt all the time and there's, you know, fears and lack of confidence. That's completely OK. But if they see any point where you're not supporting yourself, then they're like, oh, I don't know if I want to support that. You want to show them that you 100 percent believe in your vision, believe in what you want to do. And then that's going to let them know Oh, he got he got he or she has his stuff planned out like they know what they want to do i'm gonna support that and i'm gonna get 50 other people to support it so keep that in mind folks um and at the end of the day you know supply to um supply to your your product you know show people that you can do it you know by yourself and help other businesses and other things that are going on so that they can help you and then you all can go up that's ultimately the goal so thank that's you so much for everybody Yes, support Absolutely. other people. Don't just, you know, you know, you know, you're gonna uplift each other too at the same time. Absolutely. Well, that's awesome. Thank you so much, Destin, for hopping on this episode, and thank you for everyone uh, for tuning in this far. This has been 
Honestly, this summer has went by fast, but it definitely has been a record book summer. So I definitely have so much more in store, um, so much exciting stuff coming in August that uh, a lot of people are going to be excited about. Uh, thank you, Destin, for you know being a great friend, great confidant, great person in our major. Definitely have appreciated um, the Hampton experience. Uh, with you and also excited to see the future plan. So thank you again. And thank you. Thank you again so much, Wesley. Um, the little last minute shout out. You know, y'all can follow me at Destin Joel or my business page at the Gemini Touch underscore. I will be back in Hampton working again on August 21st. So absolutely and i'll draw i'll put all of that in the um youtube description so they have the the link it'll be a direct link so that you guys can check it out y'all can follow send it out to you know 5 10 50 people however you you feel married to and we can get all these businesses growing so but thank you again and we will see y'all on the next episode thank you bye